let's talk in a little bit more detail about bile. So um, bile is an amphipathic fluid, um, so it's full, full of these amphipathic compounds that have a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end. So in these images, I'm going to use orange to represent hydrophilic and cyan to represent hydrophobic. Um, and the, the reason that that is important is because we want to orient the fat in the diet towards the hydrophobic components of the bile salts and the, and the phospholipids that are part of the bile, and then the hydrophilic ends, like this um, phosphate head, towards the watery environment. And what this is going to help us do is take these big, huge lipid droplets and break them down into smaller and smaller and smaller lipid droplets so that they have more surface area for the enzymes to interact with. So uh, understanding the full um, structure of these bile acids and bile salts is not too important for us, but what I, what I want you to appreciate here is that there are components, there are parts of the bile salts that are hydrophobic, there are parts of the bile salts that are hydrophilic. And so I've represented those in orange and in cyan here. Um, and so what's going to happen is the gallbladder is going to secrete a whole bunch of this bile into the small intestine. It's going to, the bile will help emulsify the fats. And then as the bile continues to travel down the intestine, some of it will get reabsorbed and so that the liver can use it again for the same whole emulsification process. Um, and some of it will stay inside the intestine and inside the colon. And so some of the bile that stays in the colon, it can be uh, metabolized by microbes living in the gut. It can be dehydroxylated by some colonic bacteria. And there's lots of research right now into what that means for health and how that can influence the microbiome and the microbiome's function. Um, so about 50% of the bile salts that are secreted into the, um, into the intestine for digestion end up getting reabsorbed, and then the rest are excreted out through the feces. And so this is the, actually the only way that our body can get rid of cholesterol, is through bile, the bile that is not reabsorbed. Okay, so let's talk about how this is actually happening. So in this image, I'm showing you a few things. This big thing up here that looks kind of like an egg yolk, that is a big, huge lipid droplet. Um, and so what would end up happening if we didn't have any bile is we would just have these big, huge lipid droplets floating along the top, and they would not be able to access the digestive enzymes. So over here now, what I'm showing you is, um, is the bile acids and how they can take this big lipid droplet and they can make smaller and smaller lipid droplets where they have this end is the hydrophilic end oriented towards the watery environment on the outside, and then this end is the hydrophobic end that is oriented towards the fat globule and is nice and um, so the hydrophobic ends are facing towards each other. So we've made, we've taken this huge lipid droplet and now we have emulsified it to make these much smaller lipid droplets so that the uh, digestive enzymes have more surface area to access for digestion. Now the particular digestive enzymes that are important for triglycerides are an enzyme called lipase. And lipase is what is going to be digesting the fatty acids off of the triglyceride, off of the glycerol backbone of our triglycerides. However, lipase by itself, it kind of falls off. It doesn't stick very well to actually perform this digestion. So that's why we need a little bit of an additional of additional help from colipase. Colipase is going to help dock the lipase onto the small lipid droplets so that the lipase can actually perform its function. So what is going to happen is lipase attaches itself to a small lipid droplet docked with colipase. It is then going to digest the triglycerides, yielding a whole bunch of fatty acids. Those fatty acids are going to get transferred into a micelle. So I introduced micelles to you earlier. Remember that micelles are a single layer of phospholipids, so they have their, um, phos their hydrophilic phosphate heads facing towards the outside, the watery environment, and their fatty acid tails facing towards the inside, toward the core. And so we'll, this micelle will get filled up with a core of fatty acids that we have just, just digested. Now, why do we need these micelles? Well, in order to absorb these, oops, in order to absorb these fats, they need to get right up close to the enterocytes. Remember that when we're looking at these, um, the villi and the enterocytes within the intestine, that they have this unstirred water layer that is right along, right up in, um, in contact with the enterocytes. And so in order to absorb these fatty acids, they have to get really close to the enterocytes. And so that's what the micelles can do, is they, since they are nice and comfy, 
with their hydrophilic heads pointing towards the outside watery environment, they can get right up in that unstirred water layer and right up close to the enterocyte so that we can absorb those fatty acid tails. And so that's kind of what we're seeing here. Um, so we see these micelles full of fatty acids and they're getting right up close to the enterocytes. So um, you may think, oh, if, if I want to lose some weight, maybe what if I can just prevent digestion of triglycerides? That would be great. If I can't digest and absorb them, then I won't get the calories from the fat that I eat. So there are products out there that do just that. So this is called Orlistat. And what Orlistat does is it inhibits both gastric and pancreatic lipase so that you can't digest those triglycerides. Um, it comes, Orlistat is a prescription medication and it also comes as an over-the-counter version. Now, that might be great for weight loss. However, there are some rather unfortunate side effects of this. If you aren't digesting and absorbing your fats, then they're just gonna be going right through your body. So that's gonna yield a whole bunch of gastrointestinal discomfort, fecal incontinence, and steatoria, which are fatty feces that float to the top of the toilet. So there are side effects. Okay, let's talk about how we would digest phospholipids and how we would digest cholesterol. Now, when it comes to digesting phospholipids, phospholipids don't make up much of our dietary intake, but we do have phospholipid, a lot of phospholipids coming in as part of the bile. So there are phospholipids in there that can be digested and then absorbed into our body. So we have a specific enzyme for this. It is called phospholipase A2. It is also part of that enzyme cocktail that comes from the pancreas. So phospholipase A2 is going to hydrolyze one of the fatty acids off of our phospholipid. So we get this lysophospholipid and one fatty acid tail. And then um, cholesterol. So I mentioned that cholesterol is frequently in the form of a cholesterol esterase, which is this cholesterol ring structure that we're familiar with along with a hydrocarbon tail. Um, so we have cholesterol esterase enzymes that can cleave off that hydrocarbon tail, that fatty acid. Um, and the reason we need to do that is because we can't absorb cholesterol when it's in its cholesterol ester form. So with cholesterol esterase, we would end up with a cholesterol molecule and one fatty acid tail. <laughs> 